All right, happy super Saturday, you guys. I'm so excited that um, the stars aligned and we could do it virtually again a year ago today or on this super Saturday. Crazy. Amanda was actually in Dallas for a bowl game. Like, remember people used to have like football games and things like that, bowl games live and people were in the stands. Yeah, she was here for that. And she actually came and attended the Dallas Super Weekend with me. Um, and it's just such a fun event to be able to connect in community uh, with other Beachbody coaches that are in your area. Um, but unfortunately, we just haven't been able to do that in the last year. They've gone virtual. But I think what I love about that is there's a flexibility to having it virtually. And so I'm just so glad that you guys decided to take a chunk of your Saturday and spend it connected with your team, plugged into what's coming down the pipeline in Beachbody, learning, growing, um, and just doing all the things together that we that we put on our priority list. I love it. I love seeing your faces and I'm so glad you're here. Today, I wanted to, uh, I, I always want to have a time where we get to learn beyond just what Beachbody pours into us, which is going to be great. It's coming up here in about an hour. Um, and so I reached out to two of our leaders who last year hit an incredible milestone in their businesses. They both achieved one star diamond coach. And what that means is that at that point, you are beginning to build leaders within your downline. So that means that they have one diamond, two star would be two diamonds, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And there's a lot of intricacies and ins and outs of that, but it's a really big deal and a really big push to achieve that goal. It doesn't come without a lot of heart and hustle behind it. Um, and I was just so honored that each of them trusted me to partner with them and to walk through those qualifications with them. And I'm just so beyond grateful for a community like you guys that when things like that happen, you just dive in. You say like, how do we do this together? I love that. I freaking love that. Um, but fun fact, both of these ladies, Amanda and Kristen, got their like coaching start when 80 Day Obsession came out. And they weren't really coaching others yet, but 80 Day Obsession was that opportunity for them to lay a foundation of how they showed up for 80 Days Solid and built a solid foundation of self-care so that they could then go out and inspire others to do the same. There's an insane ripple effect that happens in Beachbody and our, our core mantra as a team is it starts with me. And both of these ladies, are examples to the T of what that looks like every single day. And so if you got your, if you're getting your start on our team with nine week control freak, or you're using that as a restart opportunity, like use these ladies um, path in their journey as hope and inspiration of what is possible for you. That's the coolest part about this business. Everyone's achievement opens up a door of possibility and opportunity for everyone else around. We become better when we elevate ourselves and share that unapologetically, right? So I hope that their information today just speaks to you in such a way that like, oh my gosh, I'm in this new year. I'm committing to this nine week program. And if those gals could do that, so can I. They have insane um, accolades that I could give to you guys right now. Uh, beyond achieving one star in their business centers. I'm not going to give you that. What I'm going to give you is what I get to see blessed behind the scenes. And that's grit. That's perseverance. That's getting back up when you fall down. That's facing and embracing your fears. And all of that is essential to get to the place that these ladies are today and to go where they uh, want to go in the future. So Amanda's going to kick it off for us. Both of them are talking about building business and building community, and they've both got such a beautiful message. It's just going to kind of piggyback off one another. So I'm going to step out of the way. I'm going to let Amanda unmute herself. Take it away, my friend. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> Thank you guys for showing up and coming to learn. I feel like Chris and I are gonna just wow you today. Um, so I am pumped to talk to you guys about hitting Success Club consistently. I was honored this month, this year, to hit Success Club 12, 12 months in a row. So I hit Success Club for 12 months straight. What I am still baffled each and every time I say that even and every time that I think of that, I'm like, how did I do it? And so today that's what I'm going to talk about. Britt came in here and asked me, can you talk about hitting success club? And you know what? 
I don't know about you, but that sounds like a broken record. Like how many times can we tell you to do the things? It's up to you to do the things, but freeze. Cause I'm going to blow your mind today. And I'm going to show you how to um, breathe belief into yourself. I'm going to dive in and show you what I think about each and every month, because it's not something that I hit success club this month. And so it's automatic that I'm going to hit it next month. That's not how it works. Each and every month, I have to reevaluate what I did last month or of what I can do better. What did I do super well so that I continue that? Or it's even just reminding myself, oh, fresh start. What do I need to do? How do I get down to the work? So first off, I want to dive in and just talk about planning out your day. I don't know about you guys, but for me, when COVID hit, I had all this extra time. I didn't have to go into the classroom. You know, I was quote unquote virtual teaching, which was kind of a joke in my county because I was just really emailing parents. Like I didn't have to actually virtually teach until like May. And then it made no sense because school ends in June. So I spent my time working out in the morning with you guys or whoever would join me. And then I would do some power houring and then I'd email my parents and whatnot. But if I didn't plan out my day and show up for myself in my planner, then I would just push it off. I had all this free time. Seriously, felt like all the time in the world, to be honest, um, that I was like, ooh, I can watch TV. I can take a nap. I can do the dishes. I can clean the house and live in a clean house. All the things that I could do. But I also then was like, oh, I, I can do that in an hour. So then the TV took up my time. So then I started to plan out my day. And with each step, I was like, okay, even more. This is getting better. I'm getting consistent. I can see where I have a few hours where I can just sit and relax if I do the stuff now. So summertime hit and teaching was out of my mind, not thinking about it at all. And so I was able to show up, do my workout, immediately do my power hour. And I was done by the time David came home for lunch. And then I got to spend the rest of my day relaxing because I utilized my time. So the one thing, if you have to do anything right now is go order a planner. I love a planner that tells me the hours of the day. So I full on say at 6 a.m. I'll be working out. Um, I will be eating breakfast. I will be showering and whatnot from six to around seven thirty. That's my chunk of time. I'll be doing my PD as well. And this planner, like I put in that, I put in some power hour times. I even put in like whatever my season's going to change. So summertime came. If you guys didn't know, um, I was a full time teacher, and this summer I decided not to go back to teaching. So then. I still needed a little bit of extra money because I did take a pay cut. I don't have that consistent salary. So I had to pick up something and I have a virtual church support group that I help the students learn and get on their Zooms and help fill in the gaps where their parents can't do that. So I do that from eight till one. And then I was able to schedule that in and see that my afternoon, I have more time than what I thought. I can spend that time from two to five. Well, I really take a break at two. Um, three to five is when I really work. I can take that time work before David comes home. And when David comes home, I can hang out with him and then hop on the beach body training later. So I have that break time still, but I would not be able to see that if I didn't plan out my day, because I would say, Ooh, I got time. I have four hours before, before David gets home. I can watch TV. I can maybe do some laundry, but that's not how it works. I have to get done for me, at least I have to get done the most important things first so that the other stuff that's smaller, it's okay. If it gets pushed to the backside, it's not okay. If I push my business to the backside, because that's where my income is right now, that's what I'm going to work with. So I need to make time for it. And in the chat right now, whether you're a business builder or not, I want you to tell me what can you give up one hour of so that you can do something different for yourself so that you can grow yourself or grow your business for one hour.
Nothing less time. I agree. Scrolling on social media. Mindless scrolling and rolling and laying down. Scrolling. Did you guys know this is where I add my intentional time when I want to be on social media and do kind of nothing but still do something? I will make sure if I'm watching a story, every story I watch, not during my power hour that I'm mindlessly doing something, they get a compliment. They get something. And if I don't want to compliment them, then I go to their page and see if I can actually be friends with them. If I cannot be friends with them, they get unfollowed. If they are not my jam, they're unfollowed because I want to be able to sprinkle life into others. And what is your social media for? You're liking their pictures. Why aren't you commenting on their pictures? So I love that, but you can flip it and you can be so intentional with your time friends. And that's where we can take it and do stuff with that. So we talked about planning and we kind of dove into the word I'm gonna use next is intentionality. How can you be more intentional with your time? I don't know about you guys, um, but I know sometimes I will turn the TV on when I'm power houring. Give me a little hand raise if you do the same thing. You just like watch some TV while you're doing it or you're doing something besides just sitting and staying focused. Right now, um, that's okay. It's what we do. Sometimes you need something. I don't know. That could be your downtime. But I will tell you that that one hour you stop from scrolling to put intentional hour time there and that one hour you're taking away and being completely focused, not watching the TV, you will do so much more. Because now raise your hand and tell me if typically you spend more than more than an hour on a power hour because you aren't focusing enough. Yeah, it's true. It's because we're not sitting down and being focused. We have all the distractions hitting us and then it becomes an excuse in our mind. And that's where we need to dive in to that belief and figure out how do we solve it. Right now, if you guys gave up your hour of scrolling time throughout the day and set 60 minutes out just to do box number two, so that's connecting, following up, expanding your network, inviting, um, all the things, posting on your story, posting on your feed, um, all those, if you set 60 minutes, 10 minutes per box, you'd have one hour of power hour that you put in work to something and you'd be done. You would have moved your business forward and it would have been so much more than what you did when you were watching TV and or when you're scrolling and you decide, ooh, when you're commenting on everything and then you just start scrolling randomly instead of actually doing your power hour you are now putting power to that. You are giving time to it and saying, oh, only 10 minutes of this. So you cannot distract yourself from going too far into the rabbit hole of scrolling and getting distracted. So we need to be more focused and intentional and in showing up for our business so we can show up for others and bring this light into their life and inspire them and tell them about the community that we love. Okay. Bear with me because this is the part where it sounds like a broken record because you've heard it. We've all said it. I've said it on a lot of calls. Britt said it on a lot of calls. But do your dang tracker. If you're not doing your tracker, I don't know what business you're running because you're not. It is your daily to-do list. It is easy to say, oop, I drank my shake. Who doesn't love checking off the boxes? It's like a pride and joy of mine. Drank my shake. Did my workout, did my PED. Ooh, I even followed friends. Ooh, I was even able to go and invite someone. You gotta check it so that you know what you're doing and what you're not doing. You can't put the BS out there saying, I worked my business today. No, you did not. You did not check off your tracker. You did not do the things that are actually creating you to be a business builder. You're not doing the things to help grow your business. Right now in the chat, tell me your least favorite thing to do and why? What's your least favorite thing to do on your tracker and why? So I see Kristen said connecting because you feel like it takes forever. Okay, Kristen, I'm going to tell you that connecting 
does not take as long as you feel if you set that 10 minutes and go. And I will tell you, I just compliment and ask questions. It is a pretty quick and easy thing. Um, people have a lot of babies. I don't know why I'm following all these people who got babies, but I'm like, oh, so cute. What words can your baby say? <laughs> like, ooh, cool. Can your baby draw yet? Like, whatever they're posting, I'm just going to ask them a weird question about their kid because for some reason, I'm following all these mamas who I'm like, come join me. <laughs> it's just adding value into their life. It doesn't have to be something crazy in depth. You can say, cute shirt, love, where'd you get it? Um, and that's where my mindless scrolling takes me is like, if I'm going to watch their story, then I'm going to ask them something that happened in their story. Um, ooh, you guys are doing so good because I have a lot to break it down. I see there's inviting in here and I want to tell you right now, why are you not inviting? The best thing that we can do is tell people about our awesome community that you got to join. I don't think Andrea is on this call right now, um, but Andrea said it best when she told me the other day why she loves this group. She loves being a part of this community because now she's goal oriented. She's not okay with being average. She wants to set out to be better than average. She wants to show up and have something to work for. She's 36 years old. If you're, she's halfway through life, not, e not even, that's a joke. <laughs> she's not halfway through life, <laughs> but <laughs> she's got all the time in the world to stop. <laughs> um, but she has these goals and dreams that she can now work towards because she's surrounded by a community of women who want to see her succeed, who want to see her be better than who she is right now. And she was telling me that her friends before and the friends she has in person, she's like, they're not goal oriented. They're okay with where they're going. And I want to keep going. I want to keep growing in any way possible. And that's what this community gives me. And that is so freaking true. I see that you see that Annie said it the other day to me when she said she loves showing off this group because it gives her excitement to give them freedom. They can see a new found freedom in their life. That is so freaking true. It's amazing what we can do when we allow people to come into our community and we can inspire them and help them grow and push past these limiting beliefs. I see that some people said they got nervous with following up and you know what guys, I also get kind of nervous with following up and I have to retell myself, I live a busy life. They live a busy life. We have to give them grace. And whether you say, hey, did you see my message? Or you completely start a new conversation saying, hey girl, I was thinking about you today and I just wanted to see how your day was. Can you, t did anything good happen today? Um, and that's like tricking them into seeing both your messages. The one you invited, the where they'll be like, oops, sorry, missed your message. I was busy because that's what they always say. And then they can also come back and tell you something else and you can zigzag. That's what I've been really learning is how do I, instead of telling them, hey, did you see my message? Um, it's more of connecting again with them and restarting the conversation and talking to them about that. Um, I think it was Allison who said, expanding actually someone else said it too expanding your network this is where in the beginning and i think this becomes until you understand who you are and the people you want to see it can sound difficult but it's really not i when i first started going and finding new people to follow i would just click my friend and go through and invite her friends to follow me and it's the easiest way because if they say something then I can say, hey, I see your friends with so-and-so. I love her so much. Um, how do you know her? Or, hey, I see you went to JMU. Me too. What was your degree? What year did you graduate? It's just the little things where you already find your niche with them so that you can talk to them. Now I'm in like a part where I'm going to books I'm reading or I'm going to clothes shops I like and I'm following them through that and I'm talking to them that oh my goodness, I love your shirt. Did you get it from here? I love that store too. Um, different things like that. Okay, guys, it's just being a natural human and it's really weird. It's starting conversations. Like if you were to go on a speed date, be like, this is our first time talking. What can I talk to you about? <laughs> kind of thing. So you can do it. I mean, it sounds scary, but it practice makes perfect and you can continue to do it over and over again. Um, 
Other people said posting. And if you're scared about posting, what I say is you don't have to do it to say stuff about Beachbody, but what can you share to be a light in the world? The other day I shared my snack. Like, no one cares about my snack, but I got people telling me, ooh, I love that snack too, girl. Ooh, girl, what other snacks you got? Because that's what people ask me. For some reason, a lot of people ask me what kind of snacks I eat. So I showed them the snacks I eat, which is weird. Oh, whatever, I'll show you my snacks. Um, the other day I showed my struggle in my fitness journey because people struggle all the time. Why can't I show that I struggle? It makes me more realistic. I got pictures of me and David like no other these days because he's my support system and he cares about me and seeing me succeed. So I wrote a post about that. Do they have a support system? That Could they relate to that? I think it was yesterday I asked if, do you like to stay in or do you like to go out? I'm the person who wants to stay in my PJs, but I still want to socialize. And so I told them I like game nights with friends, but that just makes me relatable. So far, I only had one post that really talked about Beachbody and that was my struggle in my workout that day. And it wasn't even talking about it. It was talking about how I didn't want to disappoint myself. So it doesn't have to be always these call to actions on join my club, join my boot camp, join, join, join. You can just show them you, show us who you are and how you can be a light in their life. Okay, last two points, I'm almost done, I promise. Um, and this one is just depicting what kind of coach you wanna be. Do you wanna be the coach who just enjoys, I won't say discount coach, but enjoys taking care of their self. And then when friends start to ask you, you tell them what you're doing. If you wanna be a coach that's a business builder, that's awesome too. But you have to see where you want to go and what you want to do. And over time, you build confidence and that belief in yourself. And when I started off coaching, I just wanted it to be for me. I told Britt that. I said, nah, I don't want to coach yet. I just want to finish 80-day obsession. I just want to do this for me. And then I had friends start to ask me, what are you doing? You look so good. And so I started to tell them. We started to share the journey little by little. And I was like, oh, okay, I can, I can sell this. It's kind of expensive. My mom bought it for me. I'm gonna sell the workouts. Ooh, someone wants something that keeps them nutritious and is a smoothie. Ooh, I can sell them Shakeology. It took me a little bit longer to sell challenge packs because I thought it was expensive until I realized what a triple threat it is to give them a challenge pack. But it, but those little other things help me believe in myself. And now I get to sell challenge packs where I get to tell them how amazing our workouts are, how I can do 30 minutes and get results. I don't got to go to the gym for that. 30 minutes at home. I can drink my shakes and use those silly portion control cups and take control of my nutrition where I feel good. I know what to do. I know how to fuel myself and feel strong because I am fueling it and giving myself more energy. I get to um, have this awesome community where people make me feel good, where my girls in this group support me so much that makes me wanna keep going. And that's the key factor that I make sure I tell everyone is you get this awesome community that is gonna build your belief in yourself and it's okay to struggle and we aren't gonna let you stop because uh, you had a bad day. We are here to help you get through the tough times so that you don't give up on yourself kind of deal. So it's a journey and wherever you are in your journey, whether you're just sharing right now with your friends on what you're doing, that's so awesome. That's a great starting point and nothing's wrong with that. Or you're here giving them the bam chicken wow wow and giving them the whole package of um the challenge packs in the community and selling it that way. It's all awesome and it's all super amazing. So you just have to figure out where are you in your journey of being a coach, being an entrepreneur, because we are all, we are all entrepreneurs because we have this amazing opportunity to sell them something and bring them um, this wonderful thing along in their journey. Okay. Last point, because I know I'm starting to talk a lot and Kristen has to talk to you guys too. Thanks for listening is Show off what you love, guys. 
show off the world, your dog, you show off your family, you show off them, whatever you like in life. That's what we do on our social media. Why are you not sharing your fitness journey? Why are you not sharing those awesome shakes you get to drink that helped you feel good during when you were beating breast cancer? Why do you not show off those awesome shakes that help curb your hunger and you can make into a sweet treat so that you can trick your brain into eating the dessert? Why are you not showing off your workouts that help give you confidence in your skin, that helped you stand two inches taller and held your head up higher because you feel so freaking good? And how come you aren't sharing this community with the people on your social media? We are each here to empower women and not tear them down. And that's amazing. So why aren't we sharing this? It's something that needs to be shared about no matter what level coach you are, you just share what makes you happy in life and no one's going to judge it. If they say, oh, just another fitness journey, then they don't realize what you're doing and how happy you are. Those are negative people, but you guys are so amazing and you love this community. You love the stuff that we do. So share it. And because that's the light in your life, that's a positive event in your life. Share it like you'd share your cat, your dog, your mom, your grandma, share it all guys. Cause that's who you are. And this is a big part of who you are. Um, so say it loud and proud, show it off and just be excited for your journey and where you are guys. Cause it's so amazing. And that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much. You guys, I loved how she talked about that you've got to know why you love this. You know what I mean? Like people are attracted to the things that, that they're attracted to somebody who's got an energy that they want to have, right? And so if you feel like, wow, like I'm just struggling with hitting success club consistently, first of all, like Amanda is your go-to person to, to, to just cling to the coattails of her success, right? Like, yes, if you're looking to hit success club consistently for 12 months in a row, like, Success leaves clues, duplicate behaviors. But one thing you will see when you go to Amanda's page is she's constantly talking about the things that she loves and that bring her joy. So find what you love. You don't have to love what Amanda loves. You don't have to love what I love. You don't have to love what anybody else here loves. Specifically, nobody wants that from you. We want you to be your own unique self and just pull out those things that you love about Beachbody and just talk about them, right? Um, people will cling to that. Amanda, so good. Thank you so much. For all of that, we're going to pass the mic over now. Kristen is going to talk about a little bit of, um, you know, I love the perspectives because Amanda this year was very driven um, in hitting success club, in building a business, in building um, a successful foundation so that she could walk away from the classroom. Um, and, and that's amazing. And I love that you're going to get a totally different perspective because Kristen is more on the um, building community. How can I bring people uh, closer into the fire? How do I bring energy? She loves like uh, <laughs> something I know about Kristen. If you were at last year's two years ago summit, she was the, the house like mother that brought everybody together. And like, man, just the way that she brings community together is just, it's so fun to watch. Um, I know that in, you know, playing volleyball and being a part of a team community has always just been something that's instilled in her. And so in this business, I tend to see her gravitate more towards how do I get people to just be sold out in love with the community that I've created with my team and, and, and everything. So she's going to talk about that guys. These two are like a beautiful yin and a yang together. And I love that we get to have that. So Kristen, I'm going to mute. You take it away, my friend. All right. I am going to try and share my screen with you guys, ladies, because I do have a presentation for you. Or I just laid it out. It's not like super. OK, can you guys see that at all? OK, let me just get it into present mode. And let me move things around. All right. So you guys, I love what Amanda talked about because there were so many points 
that is going to lead into building your community and how you do that um, with some of the things that we do on our tracker and how we share our stories and everything. So a lot of this is going to carry over from what Amanda said. And you guys, we didn't even like plan that. So I think that that's even more awesome um, to see how that's going to come. So we're going to talk about building your community today. So we are going to First of all, Brittany already said this when we started today, but it starts with me. And you know what, you guys? I want you to add another hashtag here. It starts with one. All you need is one. One person to start that journey with you and be your BFF, your accountability buddy to get started. And that one person is how you're gonna start to grow. So hashtag, it starts with one. So let's look at the definition quick of what community is. A feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. So I want you guys to type in the chat right now, what drew you to Inspire Beauty? Or if you're a part of like a sub team, like if you came in through Amanda on Be Fierce or my team, Team Lift, or whatever that is, Team Kerosene, type in the comment, what drew you to the community at first? Was there something in particular that maybe interested you, like how your coach shared things or what you saw her doing? Was it the workouts? Was it the shakes? Like think of all that kind of stuff. And what was that initial thing that drew you to that community? And then maybe what have you grown to love since you've been in the community? Like you didn't know about it when you first joined, but now that you're in it and you're doing the things, you're seeing like so much more like book club and like our team workouts and the team calls, like, there's so many more things that we were able to expand on, right? Yes, the support in the group, the emotional honesty, the cheering on of each other, yes. Looked happy, that's huge, you guys, yes. I love this. Awesome, keep them coming. So as you look at this, Think, keep those things in mind because like Amanda said, you got to find what you love about this and share about that. And that's what you're going to always come back to. So let's look at building our community a little bit. So it's always going to start with one, you guys. And that's how you're going to figure out how to grow. And I think like I was depending, deciding on, do I do building your community first or leading? Cause I feel like they kind of go hand in hand. So I chose to talk about building first because I feel like this was a real changing point um, for me um, in how I spoke to challenger versus coaches. It's kind of like, if you've heard Brittany talk, like where, what basket do you want to put all your eggs in? Right. And who gets most of your energy? Um, I'm reading the 10x rule right now, and we just talked about the four different buckets of action takers. So you have your no action takers in bucket one, you have your retreaters who just aren't there yet to fully commit. Then you have your average people who are, they're there, they just need to kind of take that next step to take massive action. And so I kind of like thought about all this with the challenger versus a coach community. And for me personally, I just felt a little stifled when I had my Facebook team page with everybody because I felt like I couldn't talk to some people about the coaching stuff, so I didn't post about it. But then I, you know, was sharing too much um, and not enough for the coaches to lean in. So a big turning point for Ashley and I was that we joined our team names together and we made a coach only page as of September. And I think that really elevated us because we had a space with people that we knew were ready to take massive action. They were already there. They had jumped in and maybe they were just tipping their toes in the water, but we were gonna help them get to that next level versus giving all of our energy to people that just weren't even truly committed to the journey like we were. So I think that's something that you definitely have to think about as you continue to grow. You know, challengers, how do you treat them? How were you treated when you came into this community? And how do you wanna treat your coaches? So a couple of things to think about as you, as you build in that sense. 
we've heard this one a thousand times, you guys, national wake up calls from Brit, like all the people, right? Create the group that you want to be a part of. So again, going back to those things that you love about the community and about maybe whatever challenge group you were in first or bad group, you know, was it that 80 day group or maybe it was MBF or maybe you're just joining now, take away those pieces that you love about it and that's what you're going to take going forward to create that energy in that group. And always, you guys, it's always adding new faces. Like if we feel stuck, it's probably because we're not adding new energy into that group. So building a business, or if you're just wanting that community and that energy, you need to keep adding into that group. You need new faces, new energy to bring different perspectives and different spunk to it. You know, if you have the same people, it gets kind of stagnant. So those are a few things that really kind of, when I sat back and thought about this, how did we build this community? It was making adjustments as we went and really creating and adding at all times. So let's talk now about leading. So again, these kind of go, you know, hand in hand, but we're going to go back and again, we're going to look at be the coach that you would want. So think about your coach that invited you. What did they do to help you start on your journey? Or maybe somebody else on this team has inspired you in a different way. What were they doing to make you want to do more as a coach and spread um, you know, inspire the other people in your community and grow more into your community. So what were those things that they were doing that you want to continue forward? Again, it's creating that group that you would want to be a part of, right? That energy level. I think one of the biggest things you guys is inviting them into the loop. The more you share about what you are doing and what is going on, the more opportunity they know that they have to join in on things. So for instance, like we've incorporated, you know, a weekly calendar for our people. We lay out what's coming up this week so that they know that they are invited to everything, that they have a seat at the table, that they can come for a workout. They can come and see what our team calls are about. They could check out an action hour. Um, you know, they can check out book club, all those things, like inviting them into the loop. So you've already invited them to your group, to your community, but now it's taking that a step further and inviting them into like your life, right? Like this is all of our lives. Like this is what we do. These are, we are friends. So invite them into that. And once you guys, once you start to like really build that community, it's passing that support baton on. So I really think of like, if you look at Ashley and I, like we were talking about this last night, but she was my one person, you guys. When I started 80 day, she was at a point where she was ready to start. And I was like, hey, you know, do this with me. And we were like the best accountability buddies. You know, we were actually looking back through the 80 day obsession group and like, she didn't post once you guys until like towards the end, you know, we didn't see any posts from her, but like, I was checking in with her every day. Like we were, oh my God, I really want something sweet, but we can't have our chocolate covered peanut butter ball until tomorrow. Like we can do this. <laughs> so she was my one person, you guys, but as she continued to grow, I passed that support baton onto her to pass that on to somebody else so that she could have her wings and help somebody else be that just one person that she was gonna help get started. So pass that on, show them how you are supporting them and how they can support the next person coming into the group. And of course, it's always about having fun, you guys. Like you have to have fun with it. If it's not fun for you, it's not gonna be fun for your group. It goes back to that again, creating that energy that you want to be a part of, whether it's in your group, it's on your team page, wherever that is, it has to be fun. So I think we all get to this point, right? Where we feel stuck sometimes. And we're gonna go back to, it starts with me. If you guys have noticed, I kind of found this presentation and was like, this is it. Have you guys noticed the circles? And what have we talked about the last two weeks on our team calls was a reflection walk. And we had all those different levels of what we were looking at, whether it was life or business and where we ranked ourselves. 
So this can be a really hard point. This can be a gut check for you, but it can also be the thing that lights your fire again. When you realize like, oh my God, I am missing this part because it's at like a two and I want it at an eight or a 10, like that can reignite your fire as much as it like hurt you inside, whether it was like, oh my God, how did I let this happen or whatever, but let that fuel you, let that be the fire to get you restarted. And we're gonna add in this hashtag, it starts with one. So you guys, I want you in the chat right now, who is one person that you could invite today to start on this journey with you? Just one person, that's all it takes. You guys, when we, you know, it's almost like when we talk about the highlight reel, you know, we see all these top coaches or like people that we want to live a life like and all those kinds of things, but they all started at one person. First it was them and then they added one. You plus one makes a team, you guys. So just one person, who can you invite today? Throw those names out there. I love this, yes. Keep it coming, ladies. So let's go build a freaking community, you guys. It's just that one person that you need to start. And then you keep, it's always a cycle of reevaluating, whether it's yourself, it's what you're doing with your group, with your team. It's always going to come back to starting with you, but it also just starts with one. And that's where community is. It doesn't have to be huge numbers. It doesn't have to be 10 people or 50 people. It can just be one, two, or three. And you just go with it because that is how you're going to gain more people into that community. You set that fire in other people and they're going to bring more fire to it. And that's all I've got you guys. Yes, I love reading these comments, you guys. Keep them coming. Amazing. You guys, if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat for either ladies, for either Amanda or um, Kristen. You know, seriously, ask them anything, strategy, you know, whatever questions you've got for them, because we do have a couple minutes that we've got about 10 minutes before we need to kind of move over to the other link. You guys, while you're dropping questions in there, I love, again, the yin and the yang. I hope you could see the yin and the yang of all of that, that like, it starts with knowing why you love this, right? Amanda posed that question. What do you love about this? Kristen said, what drew you into this community? So those are like the constant driving forces for how you bring energy and attract new people. But it starts with that one. And you have to like be excited about inviting them forward. I love that. Um, fun fact about Ashley, you guys, that was her one person. Remember I told you that Kristen and Amanda got their start at like they got their feet in with 80 day obsession. They put their toes in with 80 day obsession. So many times I hear coaches say, I don't have anyone yet, or I don't have, you know, I don't have a team yet, or I don't have this. I, that is your future. The person you invite today that joins you for this today, that you link arms with today is the future of your business. We've got to get rid of this instant gratification mindset. Um, I love that Ashley, yes, Amanda, that she never posted in the group. So when you come to me and you're like, my group doesn't have any energy, nobody's posting, guess what? That was her leader that now she gets to run this business with. So the person that's not posting right now could be your potential leader three years down the road. You can't discredit anyone in this. But like Kristen said, you have to continue to just overshare, 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 be that broken record, invite people in, put the platter out there. Right? Amanda said, put the platter out there, tell people who are following you what you have to offer, but you still have to put that platter out there to your team and remind them what they have as an accessible, that they have access to as a member of your team, right? So there's like these two, I love the buckets, uh, Kristen, that you talked about. And right here that we're seeing two examples of that in motion, so good. I'm not seeing any questions come in, guys. Do not be shy. Okay, can I just ask it because it's hard to type. So I have my community, I have my VIP team page. Nobody is active, nobody wants to be active, nobody engages, nobody likes the posts. 
So I hear everything you're saying. And I could have that silent person who, who's going to one day. But since when did you call me, Kristen? When was Team Cup? August. I created that page in at the end of August. And it literally has been crickets. So I'm not talking about my BOD group. I'm talking about my team page. Would you suggest? I mean, I'm not stopping. But do I go in there and make that calendar? Do I go in there and show them everything? Because some of them, most of them, are on the Inspire Beauty page. They see stuff there too. Do I just continue to, to echo what's art, what they've already seen? Okay. Yeah, I would, Leo. Um, we echo it in our team page and we have hit or miss. Um, we have Mandy here today. Um, Ashley has a couple of other coaches that will randomly participate. I've got ones that will chime in every now and then, but sometimes it is crickets. And, but I just, I keep sharing and I keep doing the things, you know, it's also looking at, you know, things that you've seen from Brit or maybe that Amanda does, or if it's Sarah's team page, cause I know we're in kind of each other's, but like, what are things that you like from those coaches that you're seeing? So like I carried over, you know, the calendar, um, when we, when Ashley and I knew we were going to be pushing for rank, we started the active again Wednesdays. Cause we didn't want to feel icky when the time came to be like, can you please purchase? So we started that early so that we didn't have that feeling when we got to that point six weeks later. Um, and we do the celebrations, um, the leaderboards, you know, all that stuff. So it's finding also like what you want them to see and, and take that, you know, I mean, if, if like active Wednesday isn't your thing, then don't post an active Wednesday. Maybe it's something different. You know, maybe it's like a water challenge every Wednesday that you do and you raffle off like a bottle sticker or something, I don't know, like to gain engagement. You know, we did a, um, it was Halloween and I don't know if we needed people to go active at that time because we were like kind of at the point where we could rank advance, but um, we were like, who can go active and you would win like a trick or treat bag. And there was like something in each bag. It was like a headband, um, a Starbucks gift card, like whatever. So that kind of got anybody that was active by Halloween got thrown into a raffle to win one of four prizes, one of four trick or treat bags. So like different things like that, if, if you feel that you can do that um, to just get extra, you know, participation. I saw Sarah, like she was doing, she, did you do a spirit week all week this week or just random days? Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just like for yeah, the month of February, you do like a spirit Friday or something and see if that will help or, you know, uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard, but you continuing to be in there is going to show that them that you are not going away. I was going to say that and just you showing up and even if it's the same thing the inspire beauty page is pretty big um so it just narrows it down i know some of my people actually stopped following that because it was too much going to them so you might not notice that and one of my working coach one of the girls who wants to be a working coach does not is not in inspire beauty anymore she took herself out and so she gets the information from my team page and she shows today we had i mean Thursday, we had our first team call. She showed up for it. Gabby showed up for it. Like Annie showed up for it. So that's awesome. Um, so it's just kind of different things. And I will post, like, I love what Sarah does. She doesn't always post information. Sometimes she'll throw in something funny. So for me, I did a dry shot of Energize the other day. And so I put a, posted that video in and says, who else does it? And Sometimes people comment on it. Some people won't. I also do, instead of active Wednesdays, I do self-care check Wednesday, which is the same idea. Are you drinking your shake? Do you need more? Do you need more energize? It's just kind of asking the questions and seeing who responds or sees it. If they saw it, I can check in with them and say, hey, you didn't comment on it. So I was just wondering how, how are you drinking your shakes? How are you liking that flavor? Do we need to change it? But it opens up the line of communication so that I can go and reach out to them. And that's what everything is. It's how can I find a way that I can better communicate with them, even if it's not on the team page? How can I bring it to a more personal level? I love that. 
And it's looking for things, you guys, looking for things and changing our verbiage. We gotta stop using the phrase nobody because that means no one in the whole world. And that's not true, right? Like we're, that, that's, that's a, a lie that is a limiting belief that's, a, that's holding us back. So if you find yourself saying, inserting no one into something like no one wants to join my boot camp, no one wants to coach on my team, no one wants, no one, you know what I mean? Like then we start to tell ourselves lies because we don't know what's happening on the other end of that. And, and I can point out in each and every coach on our team where someone is doing something, yeah? Right? And so it's like, it's looking, it's searching for those little clues. Who can you catch? I caught you posting your, your workout on your story. I caught you uh, commenting on someone's post today. I caught you sharing a recipe on your Facebook feed today. And then this is the kicker. In the beginning of my business, I had to physically go out and ask those coaches, hey, would you go comment on the team page and share that with us? Because I think everybody would find value. I still do that today, you guys. I had a brand new challenger in our nine week control freak group that I checked in on because I hadn't heard anything. And she told me, oh my God, this week I printed off all the things, this and that, my, my kit hasn't arrived, but I'm laying the foundation. I said, I need you to go into the nine week control freak group and share that. And she did. And um, it, was, it was Tanya, if you haven't seen that, but it, I mean, like you guys, you gotta go ask. A lot of times our people just, they don't know that that's what we want of them. So don't be afraid to ask your teammates behind the scenes. I think that's the power is getting behind the scenes too, right? With our teammates in the trenches. So good. Sarah had a question you guys about a coach and we can end with this last one. Um, if uh, either Amanda or Kristen, you wanna dive in on this. She said, any advice on how to push someone to a coach? They're, prob they're currently a customer. Um, who is hesitant to say yes to coaching, but she has it and she's already doing everything a coach does. How do you inspire that person to pull the trigger and join your team? I'm talking about Christy. Um, yes, I'm talking about Christy. She has brought so many people to Team Kerosene because of her post, constantly in people's stories. I mean, just y'all, she her. would explode. Why she don't want money. $50. I don't know. Here's all she says to me. I've even told her, I said, chick, I'm not even kidding. I will literally pay your coach fee. I will pay you your coach fee if you will sign up. I was like, I just, I, she does every, and all she says is, girl, I just love the support and I love being part of this community and I am totally fine sending them your way. And I'm like, I'm grateful for that, but these are your people. And the thing is, she's coaching them. Like, She's getting them, to, she's reaching out to them if they're not showing up for virtual workouts in the mornings. She's the one that's um, helping them pick what program to do next. She's the one sharing recipes with Shakeology with them. I'm sitting here going, oh, like, oh, y'all. Yeah. I just, I don't, any of Have you thrown the discount? That she'd get a discount on her own products? Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing, y'all. She won't even switch over from the three month subscription of oh. bod <laughs> i can't even get her to do that i was working with uh leah and kelly the other day and i noticed her three month was coming up and i said girl get the annual let's get you a challenge pack let's get you a year let's save you some money she's been looking at daily sunshine for little man even though it says four years old so she doesn't want to get it just yet for him but i'm like well, let's get you some energized let's get you something and she's like well i don't really need